Welcome to the introduction to the Coastal Race module. My name is Gwyn Batten and I'm a former Olympic medalist, coastal worm champion and ocean rower. I'm going to be presenting this webinar to you and also the keynotes which were introduced through this session to you. So let's get going. World Rowing Coastal Race Module is aimed at experienced rowing coaches who want to build their understanding of coastal rowing with a specific focus on racing the beach sprint format. World Rowing is the International Federation for Rowing and it, members are the national federations of which there are over 150. So in this session, we're going to have a look at the overview of the discipline of coastal rowing and the formats that sit under it. We're going to learn of the rower and the crew captain's obligations. And we're going to explore the course objectives. And then I'll introduce you to the 12 YouTube keynotes that make up the virtual part of the module. So coastal rowing. Coastal rowing is an official discipline of rowing alongside classic rowing, sometimes people call that river and lake rowing, para rowing and indoor rowing. It's defined by a set of measurements and regulations for the boats and the rowers. And it can, these regulations can be found in World Rowing's Rules of Racing. So if we look at the universal boat design, so the boat design itself is controlled by a number of measurements. These measurements date back to France in the late 80s. There are three types of boats, the solo skull, the double skull and the coxed quad. The boats are designed to row safely in big offshore waves and they're highly manoeuvrable and can be launched on and off at sandy beaches. And the whole premise of the design is to allow coastal rowers from whatever discipline they come to, to be able to come together to race each other on equal terms anywhere in the world. Inside the discipline, there are three formats or pathways. The beach sprint, which is the shortest, endurance and touring. So let's look at beach sprint. So beach sprint it's a specific format of run row run combination over 250 meters over a buoyed course. It uses a mixture of time trial and knockout. Races last between two and two and a, three and a half minutes. The venues typically swimming beaches with waves smaller than a meter. And successful rowers need running and rowing speed turning agility, directional awareness and wave handling skills. So a real range of skills um, on and off the beach. The events that are out there pretty much started as a result of the emergence of beach games events. And the first event was held in Italy in 2015, the Mediterranean Beach Games. And since then, Beach Sprint has been run in events, including including in Europe, Asia, Africa and the Americas. The first global event was the 2019 World Rowing Beach Sprint Finals held in Shenzhen. The endurance format, on the other hand, it's a format which is normally between four and six kilometres around a variable number of turning points. The starts and finishes can either be on the water or on the beach, depending on the location. Each race has between 10 and 20 boats on the same racetrack. So there's lots and lots of trying to avoid each other as we turn round the marks. And the races take between 20 and 40 minutes. And successful rowers need, again, good watership skills, good endurance fitness and strong navigation skills and race tactics. There's a lot of full contact going on in the endurance format. It started in France in the late 80s and was based around the rules of sailing. We've come a long way from those in the last uh, 20 or 30 years. The first World Rowing Coastal Championships was held in Cannes in France in 2007 and it's been run annually in multiple countries around the world. From inland lakes like Lake Geneva to full-on ocean 
conditions in Lima to active ports in Hong Kong. The tour format really doesn't have a competition format that sits under it. There are a few out there, but it tends to be a longer duration, um, whether it's um, multiple days or a single day. It is can be a race or a challenge or a journeying. Crews are often accompanied by support boats or land support, and successful rowers tend to have good ultra endurance conditioning, excellent navigation and watership skills. So let's look at how the disciplines and the formats can be compared to say a sport like cycling. So if we look at lane racing or classic racing and we compare that to say track cycling, track cycling, the field of play is controlled, the athletes tend to go at a single speed, there's a uniform skill that's repeated again and again, and the equipment is ultra light, quite a controlled environment. If we take coastal rowing and compare that to mountain biking, you'll notice that the crews are adapting to the field of play. There's variable speeds, so in the mountain bike they have lots and lots of different gears, where in, in coastal rowing we don't have lots of gears, but the athlete creates all those gearings. Often this um, need to create the different gearings is related to the variable speeds the boats are going at, and sometimes the boats go incredibly slowly as they uh, hit into a trough um, or they may be going faster than a men's eight as they're surfing down a green wave or coming into shore. The athletes tend to be multi-skilled and the equipment is robust. It needs to be robust because of the environmental conditions that it's operating in. So coastal rowing is the discipline. Underneath that are the formats and in mountain biking there are a number of different formats but the formats that I thought paralleled the most with endurance is cross country and endurance, downhill and beach sprint. Okay, so coastal rowing is a discipline, endurance and beach sprint are the formats of coastal rowing. Some people call coastal lane racing's wilder cousin, so do jump out there and try and find the video. There's a lovely video on world rowing for you to watch. So how does coastal different differ from classic or lane racing? Well, I think the real challenge for me is the responsibility of the athletes. The coastal rowing by its nature is really unpredictable. We're operating in a, a dynamic water environment and there are, in the rules, there are a few obligations rowers and coxes are expected to follow. And these boil down to following the local maritime rules, to wear or have within easy reach life jackets, and coxes must wear those life jackets, and know what to do if they are swamped, capsized, or in need of a tow. So some real obligations that um, coastal rowers take on board by participating in the sport in that field, dynamic environment that is the field of play. In addition to this, and by international, according to international maritime law, all seagoing boats or vessels should have one person responsible for safety and navigation. And in coastal rowing, we call this person the crew captain. And really, the crew captain has a number of expectations that and before the outing, they assess the risk and ability of the crews to go out in those conditions. They do the boat safety checks and they complete the sign out process. During the outing, they monitor these and make decisions on safety to ensure that all the crews all the crew respect the navigation and safety rules. And of course, after the outing, they are responsible for ensuring that the sign-in process is. So what does that mean for you as a coach? It means for you as a coach, you've got to work with your crews to help them build and be aware of these skills. And here's a lovely little quote, um, a lovely picture from the Hong Kong World Rowing Coastal Championships. As a coach, it's important that you empower your athletes to have the skills and knowledge to fulfill these important obligations that rest inside the rules of coastal rowing. So let's look now at the actual coastal race module itself. And these are the course objectives. It aims to give you an introduction to racing coastal, to offer you an overview of safe management of those coaching sessions, 
help you to learn how to teach the beach landing and launching and to undertake some basic rescue drills that you can do with your crews to help make them um, be more confident and competent out on the sea. Give you an insight into the techniques used in beach sprint and endurance and an understanding the logic, logistics of beach sprint racing. An understanding of the logistics of beach sprint racing, the physical demands and the role of the boat handlers. And then, of course, what we've finished with a practical experience of setting up a beach sprint training course and how to run selection races. Now, because of the nature, we've gone to a virtual course. If you're doing the virtual course, that practical bit will be done at a later date. But we've developed a, a webinar and a keynote for you to learn how the basics of running a beach sprint event. Now, whether or not you're a coach setting up a training one or whether or not you are a national team coach at wanting to do some selection, selection races, that's in there for you to do. So because we're in, you're watching this, because you're, as you're watching this video, it's highly likely that you are following a virtual route for the World Rowing Coastal Race module. And because we're in this virtual situation, because you're watching this video, it's highly likely that you are doing a blended learning way of achieving the World Rowing Coastal Race module. And what we've done is we've split what is traditionally a three day face to face course into a mixture, a part A, which is theory and a part B, which is practical. The part A, which you'll be undertaking at the moment, is attendance of some theory webinars and some keynotes. And I'll go into those in a little bit more detail and really an opportunity for you to do three theory tasks. The float plan, a dynamic risk assessment task and a race skills task. There is also an action plan to complete in there as well, but that's just a completion and we're not testing your learning in that. Once you've completed the Part A theory, you'll get a Part A certificate with an expectation that, that you will then go on and do the practical. And where the practical is that you're able to have a go, an opportunity to have demonstrations and to learn how to run a mini beach sprint regatta. So the Coastal Race module Part A Virtual consists of three main parts. Viewing the keynotes on their 12 videos for you to watch on YouTube of varying lengths from just under an, an hour to 11 minutes, I think is the shortest one. So for you to achieve watching all of those. Then live webinars, webinars for an opportunity to discuss the keynotes and to learn about what you need to do to do the theory tasks. And then of course, the need to deliver and pass the theory tasks, which you'll need to submit to your tutor. There is also in there an action planning, um, which we really, really want to see from you what you're going to do with your new learning and how you're gonna develop coastal and your coaching in that area. And then you'll be awarded a certificate part A. So let's go in and look at the keynotes. So the keynotes cover off a certain amount of the curriculum, including the safe management of the on-water session. There's three videos, keynotes to watch in here, an overview of the steps to managing an on an on-water coastal rowing session. So really nice, the whys of doing that. Then there is a section about the planning. So the sort of things that you need to do and information you need to gather to be able to plan for an on-water um, coastal session. And that includes a float plan and understanding some of the navigational hazards and calling methods for calling for help. The third one in the series is a pre-launch and it's the tasks that you would do just before you take to the water, including dynamic risk assessment, safety checks, safety briefings, signing out, etc. So some really useful information in there. So for the launching and landing and the rescue drills section, there are two keynotes to watch. One which is relatively short, but has some videos in it of the basic ways of getting on and off 
a beach, it's a nice short 11 minute section, and then the rescue drills, looking at some of the safety and rescue drills you could use with your athletes in preparing them for their competency and competence on the water. Includes um, float test, being able to put their life jacket on in the water, a basic beach orientation for when you take your athletes down to a particular beach for the first time so that you can orientate them, the features of the beach. And then, of course, critically important, the capsize and re-entry drills so that the rowers can self-rescue. So those critical sections to watch on keynotes. Then you've got the race techniques, which, of course, is the great fun. There's five keynotes in here and very much looking about the phases of the races of both the beach sprint and the endurance and how you potentially might break those up as a coach to train those. Looking at boat entry and it says boat entry for the beach sprint and, and mass mass beach start for the endurance. Boat exit, same for um, beach and endurance. Then you've got the racing turns, looking at the techniques for beach and some examples of, of where it goes well and where it doesn't go as well for endurance. So some good look at the race turns there. And then a bit of a dive into watership. This is a really complex area um, and a tough one to, to do in a theoretical way. Um, but I tr tried really hard to pull out the key features of working green waves and then surfing beach waves. And then as we start to get prepared for racing, there's one keynote that's definitely worth watching and it explores all of the elements around the race. So it looks at the physical and tactical aspects of racing beach sprint based on the rules. Um, it also looks at recovery and then you know, bits of beach sprint, like the principles. Why was beach sprint beach sprint? And, and what's the principles? That'll help you to understand the rules. Looks at pool boats, coastal standard rig, lane selection, and the role of the boat handlers in this. So some really useful stuff um, in preparing your athletes for it. So then finally, the final section is about running a team selection race. Now, there's a lot of takeaways for here for coaches if they want to set up training races or club races. So where it says team selection, it's basically a, a small scale regatta. So that's a six, that's a 36 minute bit. And it's just some really good um, logistical stuff. What sort of boys are there? How to measure out the course? How to measure, how to name up your pool boats, etc. Some really good, useful practical stuff in there. So that is everything. It's your introduction to the Coastal Race module course with a virtual component. And you will be getting, if you are successful in completing the virtual part, you will get a part A certificate. So good luck and do enjoy those keynotes, your live webinars and enjoy submitting your tasks. Mm -hmm.